Assalamu alaikum, dearest respected brothers and sisters, respected viewers wherever you are. Welcome to this new series, The Faith Book, A Journey Through Ideology, where we seek to discuss our purpose in this universe. Is there a life after death? Do we just die and disappear? And above all of this, is there a creator? And what are the characteristics of this creator if he exists? Inshallah, to clear all of this up, joining me live from London, Sheikh Muhammad Abbas Panju. Sheikh, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, thank you for having me on the show and uh, it's an honor to be with you here today. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, Sheikh, as I mentioned, um, we, we want to we wanna explore our purpose in this universe. We want to explore, you know, why are we here? And I think the most important question to ask is, what is the importance of studying aqaid? Um, it's a very good question and it's a very vital question that each and every human being needs to ask himself. What is the purpose of my existence? In reality, minhal, a person cannot get the accurate answer to this question in regards to the purpose of his existence if he is not well grounded in the science of ilmul uh, usuluddin the ilm of usuluddin or aqaid as we say these five basic tenets of our faith the fundamental tenets of our faith tawhid adala nabuwa imama and ma'ad a person needs to be able to believe in this with full conviction in order to then set the foundation to actualize the purpose of his creation. Therefore, when you look into the importance of studying Aqaid, for example, the importance of studying Aqaid is that it has a direct impact on your lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. And for example, at a very basic level, you take two individuals or you take three individuals. You have one individual who is absolutely convinced about the day of judgment. Mm. And we are talking about total conviction. You have a second person who doesn't believe Aslan that there is a day of judgment. Doesn't believe that he will be accountable for his actions in this dunya. You take a third person, he believes in Yawmul Qiyamah, believes in the Day of Judgment, but that conviction, that belief is not stamped with total conviction. Mm -hmm. If you have these three categories of people, you can imagine the lifestyle choices that they would make on earth over here, mm -hmm. how they decide to live their life. A person who doesn't believe in the concept of accountability would not think twice or would not hesitate to commit sin, to violate the rights of others, to oppress other people. He lives a life in which there is no element of accountability. Akhi, do what you want, how you want, where you want, what you want. There is, you are not held to any form of accountability as opposed to somebody who lives a life of conviction that for every statement he utters for every action that he performs he is accountable for these so a person who has this belief as opposed to a person who doesn't have this belief the first thing we see is the impact on the lifestyle choices mm -hmm. that a person makes on this earth and hence the belief system which we subscribe to a person who has a full conviction in understanding in these five core tenets of monotheistic faith, Tawheed, Adala, Nabuwa, Imama, and Ma'ad, the manner in which he lives his life, the lifestyle choices that he makes are absolutely different as opposed to somebody who doesn't even believe in this concept to begin with. And then you have the person in the middle believes in the day of judgment but that conviction is not there and hence you find him in a tussle mm. parts of his life he becomes prone to making sins and mm. the other times he refrains but the more and 
stronger and stronger his conviction becomes, the more he adheres to this discipline or this way of life known as religion or deen. Mm. This is number one. For the first answer to this question, when a person comes and asks you, why study Aqaid? Why study Ilmul Kalam? Why study Usulu Deen? The first answer is that based on the Ma'arif, based on your Ma'arifa, based on your understanding of these five concepts, it has a direct impact on your lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. This is number one. Yeah, yeah. Number two, uh, in this day and age, to abide by the right ideology is of utmost importance, particularly in the Muslim world. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Have a look at the Nawasib, mm -hmm. uh, the likes of Daesh and Boko Haram and yeah, yeah. Taliban and with all their names that they have come through. Yes. They go and commit crimes and spill blood, promote bloodshed on earth under the guise of what? Ideology. Yeah. Their fate system dictates this. This fate system dictates this. So I as an individual, I have to sit back and I have to go and I have to really study what are the five aspects of my religion. Yani, for example, from the Usuluddin, that is Mushtaraka, one aspect of Usuluddin which is Mushtaraka or a common denominator between the Ithna Ashari, Imamiyya, and for example, the Mukhalifin mm. is the aspect of Nabuwa. Mm. Nabuwa is an asal from the Usuluddin. Mm. No Muslim will uh, refute this mm. or disagree on this. Mm -hmm. No problem. However, Baba, the difference is that what is the character of this Nabi that you believe in mm. and the character of the Nabi that I believe in? Yeah. And in this concept of Nabuwa, understanding who, not only who the messenger is, but what the characteristics of the messenger of God is. Because a lot of the violence that is committed mm. in one way is justified because they feel that they are following in the sunnah and in the seerah of a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. Tayyib. So I need to ask myself, is it possible? Is it rational? Is it logical? Mm -hmm. That a prophet of God, designated, appointed by Allah Azza wa Jal, the creator of the universe, can advocate such type of violence in the name of ideology? Is there proof for this? Is there n proof that refutes it? How does this happen? Again, you see now this is also connected with lifestyle choice. Yeah, 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 definitely. Somebody who understands the holy prophet or understands the concept of nabuwa. Based on his understanding, either he adapts a violent way of life, la, or he comes and he takes a peaceful way of life. Rahma wa ma'arsalna rahmatan lil alameen. So studying usuluddin has an impact on our lifestyle choices, as we said, number one. Number two, uh, understanding the right ideology from all these ideologies that exist, you could say, within the market. Mm -hmm. Number three, and... I would say over here, these are very summarized answers by way of index and inshallah it opens the, uh, the it, it, uh, it sets forth the platform for more discussion and tadabbur and tafakkur, both inshallah. from my side, your side and from the side of the respected uh, viewers. Inshallah, inshallah. For the third, which I believe, again, more specific to us now, Shia Ithna Ashari. Yeah. We have a hadith by Imam al-Baqir mm -hmm. salawatullahi wa salamhu alayhi in kitab al-kafi where he says la yanfa' ma'a shak wal juhud amal your actions yani your acts of worship mm -hmm. have no benefit if they are accompanied with doubt uh -huh. Or if they are accompanied with rejection, mm. yani of what? Of the fundamental principles of Islam, mm. which we say within this Usuluddin 5, Tawheed, 
عدالة نبوة إمام عند معاد يعني the issue is very very sensitive and crucial يعني meaning what if we were to contemplate on the words of إمام الباقر صلوات الله وسلامه عليه a person's salat a person's salat is not valid so long as he doesn't understand his Lord correctly Mm. And you think mm. about it, the Imam said something extremely logical. Yeah. Yani imagine Habibi Minhal, Ani, I am reciting my salat on time, five salat three times a day. On spot. Salatul Fajr. Ya Akhi, I'm up even before the time of Fajr and I've recited Nawafil day in, day out. Salatul Dhuhr, I recite pinpoint at the time of Zawal. In fact, before that, I do the Nawafil. Mm -hmm. Salatul Maghrib, I am reciting my Salat again on time. But imagine, I recite my Salat on time, but I do not believe my God is just. I doubt in His Adal. How I believe Allah is not Rahman? I believe He's not Rahim. Is there any benefit of my salah? What's the point of the salah? Ya barakallah beek. This is what Imam al-Baqir yeah. alayhi salam is saying. The acts of worship yeah. have no validity if we do not understand our Creator in the right way. Mm -hmm. What is the point of salat? Reciting salat my entire life and I'm praying to a God who I believe has legs and on Yawmul Qiyamah is going to put his leg in the fire like some of the Muslim scholars are. Wow. Muslim wow, scholars wow. and we will talk about this in Tawheed. Muslim scholars have attributed this. Wow. Well known, revered, books are published, printed all over the world, m multilingual in all these things. Wow. So Ani, I ask you, the way contemplating on the words of Imam al-Baqir salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, is there any benefit in my salat praying to an Allah, praying to a creator who has legs? That's, that's like saying you're given attributes you're giving the attributes of Allah to us because we have legs. We have legs. Yani giving Allah human attributes. So our point over here is this. A person fasts, a person can pray, a person goes for hajj. Mm. But have we understood the creator mm -hmm. whom we are supposed to worship? Yeah. If we don't get this point right, we don't understand Allah Azza wa Jal, the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. This is on the assumption that the creator exists. Yes. Today being an introductory session, inshallah, mm -hmm. we're just laying out uh, a general conversation. Inshallah. But when we come to the uh, text, inshallah, the, the bahath will be very murattab, inshallah. inshallah. will be sequential in the chronology as per the uh, scholars. Sure. But our question over here is this. Uh, the validity of our acts of worship. What is the purpose of this Hajj and this Salat if I do not even understand my Creator the mm. way He wants me to understand Him? Mm. Yani, mm. It could be that I'm worshipping a pigment of my own imagination. Yeah. I could be worshipping an opinion of mine. Yeah. So if I'm praying Salat, and hoping this Salat will be accepted by a God who is a pigment of my imagination, <laughs> a creation of my imagination. A Lord who I have understood, for example, through opinion. Am I truly worshipping Allah or worshipping something other than Allah Azza wa Jal? Yes, I could be praying, I could be fasting. But who is this Lord that I'm praying to? Yeah, what yeah. are his characteristics? I believe in the Prophet. Mm. And I will be asked in the grave, who was your Prophet? And we all know by name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjul faraja. But who is this Prophet? Is he infallible? Is he not infallible? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imamat, for example. Mm -hmm. As an Imam, can he be appointed? Is he appointed by Allah Azza wa Jal? Or is it possible that the successor of a prophet be appointed through election? These are questions. The issue of imamat has led to 
bloodshed in, uh, for years. More than a day of judgment. Will I be resurrected in my body and soul or am I just resurrected through my soul? Mm -hmm. So all these questions yes. are important for us. The answers we can get is by studying Usuluddin mm -hmm. or Ilmul uh, Kalam or Aqaid in the right way. Inshallah. Studying these subjects are very important so we are able to answer these questions and number one, it leads the platform as a summary, leads the platform for us to figure out the purpose of our existence. Mm -hmm. Number two, the right Aqidah, the, ra the right faith system. Mm -hmm. Number three, for the validity of the acts of our worship. Inshallah, thank you very much, Sheikh. I just want to remind the viewers that if you want to call in and have a question for the Sheikh, please call in on 0203-515-0199. And alternatively, if you want to WhatsApp in your questions, then the number will be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Sheikh, going back to... Um, so, we discussed the importance of Aqaid, but what is the actual definition of Aqaid? Sure. When we come and we look at the definition of the term aqaid, mm -hmm. yani the science. Mm -hmm. You see, this science of studying, this science of studying, understanding these five principal tenets of mm -hmm. our monotheistic faith, Tawheed, Adala, Nabuwa, Imama, and Ma'ad, Scholars have named this science, have given this science different names. Some call this Aqaid, mm -hmm. the science of Aqaid or Ilmul Aqaid. Mm -hmm. Some call it Usuluddin. Mm -hmm. Some call it Ilmul Kalam. Mm -hmm. Yani three names or that have been given to this science that essentially point towards the same reality. And each one has a reason behind it. Again, really quick by way of invoice. Mm -hmm. uh, by way of index of one. Aqaid is derived from the verb aqada mm -hmm. or the word aqd, mm. yani a tight knot. Yes, yes, yes. Why is it known as a knot? Yani a knot, a, a knot which is, you know, tightly yeah, yeah, yeah. tied together. Yeah, yeah. You can't undo it. So the reason why these the science of these five principal tenets is known as aqaid because the result is supposed to be, because of your conviction, this belief is so firmly rooted in your mind and your heart that you cannot compromise and you will not give up or turn back on your principles. Mm -hmm. So you see, there is a logical connection behind why this science is known as Aqaid. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it is also known as Ilmul Kalam. Mm -hmm. So some people, scholars, they've got a number of reasons as to why debate and proof of these five tenets is known as uh, Ilmul uh, Kalam. Kalam because they used to say Kalam, yani the debate is in. Mm -hmm. So the debate is in the oneness of God. The debate is in the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. For example, and Usuluddin, yani from the word Asal, yani the roots of the religion, the foundation of the religion. Mm -hmm. If this is correct, everything is based upon this. Okay. As opposed to Salat and Sawm and Hajj and Zakat, they are known as Furu'uddin, mm -hmm. the branches of the religion. Mm -hmm. And this five, Tawheed, Adala, Nabuwa, Imam, Ma'ad, Usuluddin, yani the Asal, the roots. Hence, the, the strength of the branches can only be in accordance to the strength of the roots so if the roots are strong then the branch yields fruit of course of course uh thank you very much Shekhan, for enlightening us on this uh, i do want to remind the viewers that if you do want to call in and ask the sheikh a question the number is 0203-515-0199 it will appear on the bottom of your screen and alternatively if you want to whatsapp in your questions the number will be at the bottom of your screen inshallah we'll go to a short break and we'll see you on the other side assalamu alaikum
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for joining me back uh, with uh, Sheikh Muhammad Abbas Panja as we discuss the faith book, A Journey Through Ideology. So, Sheikh, before the break, we were discussing you know, the importance of studying aqa'id and the definition of aqa'id. Um, but the book, what is the book for uh, Haqqul Yaqeen? Sure. So, um, building on this definition, as uh, we, we explain the different names that are given to this science, Aqa'id, Ilmul Kalam, Usuluddin, um, the definition in itself of this science is the science in which we establish the science in which we establish the core principles of the religion through proof mm -hmm. or evidence that necessitate certainty and conviction. Okay. So it's an analytical science in which proof is, evidence is Presented, this evidence is then analyzed to reach to a certain conclusion and belief in that conclusion is fostered with certainty mm. and conviction because of the strength of the proof. Mm. The fact that the proof is irrefutable, your conviction in that concept which is proved through this irrefutable proof is also strong. Mm -hmm. If it makes sense. Yep. So the stronger the evidence, the stronger your certainty or the stronger your level of conviction. So you talked about strong evidence. Right. What, you know, what makes strong evidence? Because there's a lot of people out there who, whatever you bring forth to them, they will right. always have something to question. They'll always say, well, well why, why is this that way? Or why is that this way? And, you know, how... How can we get people to reach that level of certainty? And how can we get them to reach that level of confidence that, you know what, we actually do have a creator that exists out there? Of course. And the, this is an issue that we will see when it comes to, when we enter into the uh, bahath of uh, Tawheed or the wujud of Allah Azza wa Jal, the existence of God. Mm -hmm. yani the proof that, that is brought to us through this textbook there, we are blessed with the faculty of intellect, which was uh, one of the things I wanted to speak about while introducing the book. But these are proofs mm -hmm. according to what we say the okala would not refute. Okala, mm -hmm. yani the normal intellectual person mm -hmm. would not reject yes. the caliber of the proof because the intellectuals have this norm and have these, you could say, guidelines when it comes to validating and refuting proof. So just like in every science, when you go, for example, in the, in the chemistry lab, you know, there's a certain procedure, there's a certain protocol in which a certain experiment is validated or invalidated. So the same thing when it comes to the science of uh, ideology, there are certain governing rules through which ideology or the proof, sorry, is either validated or invalidated. And then in according or in addition to this, there's a science of mantik as well, mm -hmm. the science of logic, mm -hmm. which teaches us how to uh, uh, create and designate and to um, align the right arguments mm -hmm. in order to receive or in order to deduce the right conclusions. Okay. And uh, just uh, one final point is, you know, who is the author of the book Haqqul Yaqeen? Of course. The book that we want to use mm. over or through this series is known as Kitab Haqqul Yaqeen. Mm -hmm. It is authored by Sayyid Abdullah Shabbar. Now, one of the reasons that um, we selected the text Haqqul Yaqeen in addition to the fact that um, it was very highly, highly recommended by a number of the uh, uh, Maraja and Mujtahideen inside of Najaf al-Ashraf as a text to depend on in order uh, to correct and to strengthen our belief system. Mm -hmm. But you find that this book, Hakul Yakin, has got a very beautiful style when it comes to presenting proof Mm. and evidence mm. for each one of these five subjects, mm -hmm. Tawheed, Adala, Nabuwa, Imama, and Ma'ad. 
these proofs are divided into two categories. What we have dalil akli mm -hmm. and dalil nakli. Okay. Dalil akli yani intel evidence which can be processed and validated by the intellect okay. as the intellect. Uh -huh. yani the intellect has a capacity, capacity of idraq. Yani it has the capacity to understand, recognize and accept mm. certain truths mm. mm -hmm. such as the existence of God. And then on the other hand, you find that the Sayyid in his book, uh, in addition to the Dalil Akli, he has Dalil Nakli. Mm. So Dalil Nakli, yani textual evidence. Uh -huh. What is the evidence of the existence of Allah from within the Quran? Mm -hmm. What are the characteristics of Allah Azza wa Jal from the Quran? Mm -hmm. yani leave non-Muslims, but even us as Muslims, even mm. us as Shia, Ithna, Ashari, how much of Tawheed do we know from the Quran that we recite? Yes. yes. This is one part of Dalil Nakli. Yep. The second part of Dalil Nakli is understanding these five concepts from the Hadith of Ahlul Bayt. Mm -hmm. Ya Akhi, what does Amirul Mu'minin have to say about Tawheed? Yes. What does Imam Sadiq and Bakir and Qadim and Jawad have to say about the sifat, the characteristics of Allah Azza wa yes, yes, How yes. does Imam Zainul Abidin or Imam al Sadiq describe Rasulullah? Mm -hmm. How does Amirul Mu'minin describe Rasulullah? How do they talk about the Day of Judgment? How do their words complement or align with, for example, the words within the Quran? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Thank you very much for enlightening us on this uh, topic and actually giving us a very, very uh, amazing introduction to the book Haqqul Yaqeen. Inshallah, we'll go to Adhan right now. Thank you for joining us live from London, and Inshallah, we'll see. Inshallah, we'll see you next uh, episode where we will discuss this topic further. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.